Hello everyone, welcome to Anatomy Channel. I am Dr. Rajita. Today we shall learn about the components of diencephalon and thalamus in detail and including its relations, connections and spotters. So we shall start. Diencephalon, uh, to see the diencephalon, this is the mid sagittal section of the brain showing the cerebrum and down the brain stem and cerebellum and diencephalon is the continuation of midbrain above and it is located below the lateral ventricle the cavity of the cerebrum is called as lateral ventricle the lateral ventricle is bounded anteriorly and above here by corpus callosum and below the lateral ventricle this part is called as diencephalon the diencephalon is uh, basically divided into two major parts called as pars dorsalis and pars ventralis and the cavity present within the diencephalon is called as the third ventricle which is a thin slit like gap separating the two thalami so let's see the parts of pars dorsalis and pars ventralis so these two parts dorsalis and ventralis are separated by means of a yes shaped sulcus which is called as hypothalamic sulcus hypothalamic sulcus cranially it extends from interventricular foramen of monroe and caudally it continues with the aqueduct of sylvius which continues down into the midbrain so interventricular foramen of monroe is an opening which communicates the two lateral ventricles on the either side and it communicates below with the third ventricle in between so from the interventricular foramen of monroe to the cranial end of the aqueduct of sylvius the faint sulcus is called as hypothalamic sulcus the area above to the hypothalamic sulcus this is called as pars dorsalis and below to the hypothalamic sulcus is called as pars ventralis the components of pars ventralis hypothalamus and subthalamic nuclei pars dorsalis consists of thalamus metathalamus and epithalamus to see this structures it can be viewed from above if the se section is taken at the level of genu if the section is taken at the level of genu horizontally removing the tela choroide the choroid plexus we can view the thalamus from above so after taking the cut section at the level of genu and uh, after removing the tela choroide we can see the thalamus in this way having the anterior narrow end and posterior broader end and posterior broader end are separated by means of a green color area is, which is shown here called as hebenular triangle deep to which there are, are nuclei called as hebenular nuclei and the gland which is separating here is the pineal gland and we can see the two superior colliculi of midbrain so pineal gland hebenular nuclei hebenular commissure and posterior commissure all these structures forms the epithalamus and metathalamus is formed by medial and lateral geniculate bodies which are related to the posterior end of the thalamus they are overhung from the posterior end of the thalamus called as medial lateral geniculate bodies these two bodies together called as metathalamus so the pars dorsalis consists of thalamus and uh, metathalamus is by medial and lateral geniculate bodies and epithalamus is by pineal gland hebenular triangle hebenular nuclei posterior commissure and hebenular commissure so let's see about the thalamus thalamus from above we can see it has got a narrow anterior end and broader posterior end the axis of the thalamus runs laterally posteriorly separating the posterior ends and this is an oblique axis 
and anterior end of the thalamus is marked by a tubercle which is called thalamic tubercle and posterior end of the thalamus which is broad called as the pulvinar part of the thalamus. The cavity between these two thalamus is called as third ventricle and the two thalami are connected by means of a grey matter which is called as interthalamic addition. This is the interthalamic addition connecting the two thalamus. On the eye caudate nucleus, the caudate nucleus is a part of basal nuclei or basal ganglion present within the white matter of brain. The caudate nucleus anterior end, this is the head of the caudate nucleus which continues as the body and tail of caudate nucleus. And anterior end of the thalamus forms the boundary of interventricular foramen of Monroe and it is related here with the columns of fornix. Next. So let's see the relations of thalamus in coronal section. So coronal section is taken in the at the level of the body of the corpus callosum. So if we take a coronal section like this vertically down we can see the superior and inferior surfaces of the thalamus along with its relations. Relations and surfaces of thalamus can be viewed in coronal section. So after taking coronal section this is how the thalamus looks like. So these are the two right and left thalamus and the thalamus has got the superior surface, inferior surface, lateral surface and the medial surface of the thalamus. Superior surface forms laterally the floor of lateral ventricle. This is the lateral ventricle. So lateral part of the superior surface forms the floor of lateral ventricle. Medial part of the superior surface is related to the telar choroide of third ventricle. And inferior surface of the thalamus. Inferior surface of the thalamus, it is anteriorly it is merged with subthalamus. And posterior part of the thalamus is free which is called as the pulvinar part of thalamus. And medial surface of thalamus is related to third ventricle. So medial surface of the thalamus most of it forms the lateral wall of the third ventricle. And lateral surface of the thalamus, lateral surface of the thalamus is separated from the lentiform nucleus by means of internal capsule. So lateral surface of the thalamus is related to the anterior limb of internal capsule of white matter. So this is about the relations of thalamus. Let's see the nuclei of the thalamus. The thalamus has got the anterior end and posterior end, anterior narrow end and posterior broader end which is called the pulvinar end and it has got the medial surface here and this is the lateral surface. And thalamus itself is divided into three parts by means of a, a white matter present within the thalamus like a shape of a letter Y. This is the Y shaped white matter present within the thalamus dividing the thalamus into three parts. Anterior nucleus or anterior part of the thalamus present between the two limbs of Y which is called as anterior nucleus and on the medial side it is called as medial part which is having again two nuclei called as medial dorsal nucleus and smaller medial ventral nucleus and the larger ventral part ventral part is again divided into two parts called as dorsal tire and ventral tire dorsal tire components are three things these are lateral dorsal lateral posterior and pulvinar part these three components will form the dorsal tire Let's see the ventral tire. Ventral tire is formed of ventral anterior, ventral lateral and ventral posterior. Ventral posterior are again of two nuclei which we cannot see both together. This in the lateral side here is the ventral posterior lateral nucleus. And if we take a cut section, we can see a nucleus deep to it called as ventral posterior medial nucleus. This is ventral posterior lateral, ventral posterior medial nucleus. And let's see the other grey matters present within the thalamus. And there are a midline nucleus present along the medial surface of thalamus. This midline nuclei are lined by the ependymo of the third ventricle and we can see the interthalamic addition connecting the opposite side of the thalamus. Laterally, there is a layer of grey matter. 
separated from the thalamus by means of a layer of white matter. This layer of white matter is called as external medullary lamina and the grey matter is called as reticular formation. And within the internal medullary lamina, there are collections of grey matter which are called as intralamina nuclei. And one among the intralaminar nuclei is quite larger which is called as centromedian nucleus. And posterior end of the thalamus, the pulvinar part, overhangs two bodies which are called as medial geniculate body and lateral geniculate body. La uh, lateral geniculate body forms a part of optic pathway and medial geniculate body forms a part of auditory pathway. Let's see the connections of thalamus. Uh, this is the schematic diagram to show the connections of the thalamus. And uh, we know the thalamus has got the anterior nucleus and uh, medial nucleus, lateral nucleus. And starting with the anterior nucleus of thalamus, it has got the connections with the mammillary bodies which forms the th mammillothalamic tract. And uh, coming to the lateral part which is the major part and lateral part is again divided into dorsal tire and ventral tire and starting with the ventral tire ventral anterior receive the connections from the globus pallidus so the globus pallidus is a part of lentiform nucleus which is a part of basal ganglion so the medial part of the lentiform nucleus is called globus pallidus lateral part is called putamen so the globus pallidus the connections reach the ventral anterior nucleus these fibers are called as superior thalamic fibers and from the ventral anterior nucleus the fibers further connect to the premotor area of cerebral cortex now we shall see ventral lateral ventral lateral connects to the dentate nucleus of cerebellum and from the dentate nucleus the fibre, fibers relay in the red nucleus of midbrain and from the red nucleus they end up in ventral lateral nucleus of thalamus and from the ventral lateral nucleus reach the motor area of the brain for proprioceptive senses. So this tract is called dentito rubro thalamic tract. Let's see ventral posterior. Ventral posterior we know it has got two parts ventral posterior lateral and ventral posterior medial. Ventral posterior medial has connections with the trigeminal lamniscus. Ventral posterior lateral receive the connections from the medial and spinal lamnisci. And from these nuclei the fibers reach to the sensory cortex of the brain which carry most of the senses of the opposite half of the body. And let's see about the dorsal tire starting with the posterior end that is the pulvinar part. Pulvinar part has got efferents and afferents from the parietal cortex, temporal cortex and occipital cortex and lateral dorsal and lateral posterior. So first we will do with the lateral posterior. Lateral posterior has connections with the superior parietal lobule and lateral dorsal is having connections with the cingulate gyrus and reticular formation is having connections with the brain stem which further connects to all the parts of the brain so reticular formation here is the reticular formation present on the lateral side and midline nuclei consists of reticular nuclei and the lintralaminar nuclei including the centromedian nucleus all these are reticular nuclei they connect with the brain stem reticular formation further they connect to the all parts of the cortex of brain so this is in short about the connections of thalamus and we shall continue with the spotters of thalamus we shall understand the thalamus with some spotters here this is the mid sagittal section of the brain showing the location of thalamus in a closure view we can see the thalamus and hypothalamus separated by means of hypothalamic sulcus and the upper end of the hypothalamic sulcus opens into interventricular foramen of Monroe and lower end of hypothalamic sulcus continues as cerebral aqueduct in the midbrain and superiorly the thalamus is related to the pia mater here along with the choroid plexus called as telochoroidae of third ventricle.
and uh, you can see the fornix and septum pellucidum covering the lateral ventricle and above to which is the corpus callosum. This is the coronal section showing the relations of thalamus. Superiorly it is related to lateral ventricle and choroid plexus. Inferiorly to subthalamic nuclei and uh, this section is taken at the level of superior colliculus. So we can see the red nucleus and substantia nigra. Laterally it is related to the internal capsule and medially the thin slit like gap is the third ventricle which is present on the medial side of thalamus. The pinned structure is the thalamus. Often asked a sub question for the spotters is to mention the nuclei present in the thalamus. Some of the nuclei are anterior nucleus, lateral dorsal nucleus, lateral posterior nucleus, pulvinar nucleus, ventral anterior, ventral lateral, ventral posterior medial, ventral posterior lateral, intralaminar nuclei and reticular formation. So these are the some of the nucleus present within the thalamus and above we can see the cavity of lateral ventricle and below hypothalamus. I hope you all like my session. Please like, share, subscribe and press the bell button for further notifications. Bye.